Hi, this is Thomas Farley of southwestrockhounding.com. Southwestrockhounding.com. I pointed to the railroad tracks in my last video. You can't co legally collect on an active railroad line, but you'll find rocks scattered in the desert nearby. And I found this material nearby that confused me quite a bit, but I'm glad I found it because it answers a number of questions. This has some nice flow lines, which I can describe later. This material is quite drawn to a magnet, so it's iron rich. This is slag. This is a byproduct of smelting operations in which heat and other chemicals and minerals are used to extract a commodity. Like you might have a silver smelting operation to get silver out of the parent rock, or you could have a copper smelting operation. Much more common than smelters years ago, you could have smelting going on and waste byproduct like this as a result of a steel making plant. So smelting was going on all over the country at different locations and this used commonly as ba uh, commonly used as ballast in railroad tracks. So it could come from almost anywhere but should come from a source fairly close by. The thing that I've always read about slag is that it's often confused for meteorites. So let's look at the differences here. These are two iron stone meteorites and they're also attracted to the magnet. The chief difference is that slag here, if you have, you think you have a meteorite and it's displaying these little pinholes where gas escape, these are vesicles. The stone meteorites will not have that. So these are not going to have any vesicles. Uh, confused by the term vesicles, this is basalt, uh, vesicular basalt. That refers to the texture. This is what a lot of people think of as lava rock. This actually has peridot in here. So that's the difference between or a big difference between slag. Slag is practically everywhere. People find it everywhere and they often think it's a meteorite. This was, oh, let's get back to those flow line. This flow line is an interesting texture, if you can see it. And the geologist might call that under this name. It's Hawaiian. I won't even try to pronounce it, but that's the kind of texture and so People may be collecting slag, I don't know, but you would have a variety of different materials and interesting looking flow lines. So the other thing that came with it is this, uh, this is probably basalt, again volcanic rock with a porphyritic, porphyritic texture, which means large crystals. Uh, most basalt more like this, fine grained. This has more feldspar showing. This probably cooled at a slower rate, allowing the crystals to develop. You can also have, it's another example. This is uh, rhyolite, porphyritic rhyolite. So again, porphyritic refer refers to these large crystals. So it'd be interesting in the railroad line where this came from. You can also have, besides slag, you can have just a mineral used. Old time railroad tracks might have used just a, a, a mineral. This might look like a rock, but it's actually just one thing. This is, comes from Bisbee, Arizona. Uh, my friend Rolf, the mineral collector down there and dealer, 1887 Bisbee ore from Fairbanks, Arizona, Railboro bed. Hematite variety turgite. So if you're a mineral collector, or even just a rock collector investigating old abandoned railroad beds, might be a good idea. 
What else do we have? Oh, so we've covered slag and we've covered minerals used as road ballast and then we've looked at rock. So again, many things to investigate as long as you're not on the, an active railroad line. Thanks.